Hi, uh, my name is Tessa Fallon. I'm the co-chair of the Seller Working Group at the IETF. And you'll notice that I have no slides. <clears throat> and the reason for this is, um, if you've heard of Edward Tufte, the uh, person who works in uh, data visualization, he's a mathematician and statistician at Yale. Well, he's anti-PowerPoint, so I've decided I'm anti-PowerPoint too. <laughs> That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so that's why no slides. Um, IETF Seller, if you want more information about the working group, you can Google IETF Seller, C-E-L-L-A-R. And the acronym Seller stands for Codec Encoding Lossless and Lossless Archives and Real-Time Transmission. <coughs> The reason we chose that acronym is because it made an acronym that was actually a word. So codec encoding does not make a ton of uh, sense. We know that we're aware of it, and don't read too much into the acronym. Um, so this is probably the least technical presentation, um, which is only fitting since I have the least technical expertise in this particular room in regards to these specifications. So I would ask um, that if you have any uh, particular technical questions, that you refer them to Dave Rice, Ashley Bloomer, Drew Martinez, or uh, Steve Plum, uh, the people who are doing the vast majority of work on the actual writing of the specification. <coughs> so I'm happy to be interrupted at any point, um, but there are five key issues or five key things that I want to talk about, mainly the origins of Seller, the uh, milestones created, the current working group accomplishments, what's up next, and um, how we can, uh, what we need in terms of people contributing. So uh, the <coughs> IETF, um, as part of the PERFORM project, which I believe you've heard about already this morning, um, their mission is to make the internet work better by producing high quality, relevant technical documents that influence the way people design <coughs> use and manage the internet. Uh, their core principles are open process, uh, technical competence, meaning that technically competent input can come from any source, uh, rough consensus and running code, um, volunteer core, and protocol ownership, meaning that IETF publishes and in some senses owns the uh, specifications. <coughs> so we took FFB1 and Matroska to the IETF with the proposal of standardizing those specifications uh, through the IETF standardization process. And we found that a lot of ITF folks were already using Matroska. So last year in Prague, uh, we proposed this in person to the IETF. And um, I stood up in front of the room and was uh, pretty much, you know, in, in firing squad style, was, was vetted by the IETF. I feel like that was my hazing or initiation into the organization. Um, but the end result is that um, we had enough people support um, the creation of a working group to move forward with a formal proposal that uh, the working group become part of the IETF. Um, conditions of creating the working group um, was that the proposal was expanded from FFV1 and Matroska to include FLAC and EBML. Um, the working group proposal was approved by the IETF board in November 2015. And the co-chairs of the working group are Tim Terryberry of uh, Mozilla and myself. And this is how I became uh, chair of the working group. They asked me, do you want to be the chair? <laughs> okay, what does it involve? And it involves uh, spending hours of your life reading over IETF documentation and herding cats in order to get the specifications published. And who could resist that? So um, that's why I am the chair, as opposed to, uh, you know, the, uh, I would say, people who have much more expertise uh, in regards to the technical aspects of FFE1, Matroska, uh, FLAC, or EDML. Um, we were one of over 100 working groups created in 2015 um, at the IETF. And overall, the IETF had over 1,000 documents published that year. So that's just to give you an idea of, <coughs> you know, the size of the IETF and the amount of work being done. So the milestones for our working group um, were to provide information uh, specifications for the previous versions um, of FFP1, Matroska, and FLAC. And uh, we were very optimistic uh, last November when we were creating these milestones. 
So um, we figured, I think, that we'd be done by December of this year. And so suffice it to say that we're finding, um, we're going to need to revise those milestones. And um, I would expect this to last until the end of 2017, um, at the least. Um, and so part of, um, you know, part of meeting these milestones is uh, creating the documentation for the specifications um, in accordance with the IETF protocol, which is very time consuming and pedantic, but with a purpose. There's a reason that um, you know, all these protocols are in place, and even though it can seem overwhelming at times, that's because the IETF adheres to a certain level of quality. And so if you ever really, uh, if you ever want something really looked at and taken apart, and you know, each word picked over, your grammar corrected, etc., you should take it to the ITF, because they're, they're happy to do it. Um, so our working group has its uh, inaugural meeting, our inaugural, inaugural in-person meeting tomorrow. <laughs> Um, at the Intercontinental Hotel in Berlin, uh, which is across town. You can take the 200 bus, which leaves from right up here, to uh, Budapest, Budapest Strauss, I think. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and uh, the in-person meeting is exciting because it's the first uh, you know, in-person meeting for our group. And um, you know, I'm looking forward to hearing from everybody in attendance and seeing um, you know, kind of who shows up and who's interested in participating. But one of the great things about the IETF is that the in-person meetings are not where the work gets done. All of the actual work is done uh, via the mailing list. In the meetings, in the in-person meetings, you can even get consensus or you know, um, have action items to move on, but they're not voted on in the in-person meetings. So if you can't make the in-person meetings, you don't really miss much. Or <laughs> Perhaps I shouldn't phrase it quite that way, but it's not mandatory to attend the in-person meetings, um, which is nice because they're four a year and uh, they're in different parts of the globe each time. This one happens to be in Berlin, the previous one was in Buenos Aires, etc. Um, so it requires a lot of travel. Um, so uh, thanks to the efforts of a number of individuals, we have draft uh, RFCs, which are requests for comments just kind of like the precursor to uh, publishing a specification. Um, we have draft RFCs for all but FLAC, and I will, more about FLAC later. Um, published to the IETF uh, Seller uh, Document Library. And um, again, if you Google IETF Seller, um, you can get to our working group page and review the documents um, that have been posted. And so I've been told that the Matroska specification is over 300 pages. So um, if you're looking to contribute, we definitely appreciate um, some editors uh, jumping on board and some people to review and comment. Um, <clears throat> but at any rate, um, the RFCs and the drafts and all IETF documentation are vetted by the IETF community, not just members of the seller group. So anybody who wants to comment on these, on, on the documents that have been published um, are welcome uh, you know, to, pub, uh, to comment on the list um, if they like. Uh, <clears throat> and one of the uh, primary goals uh, of the working group thus far is to introduce uh, folks that are working on FFV1 and Matroska to the IETF community, because um, there are other working groups there that are working on things that would be of interest, I think, um, to this group, including um, one that's called the Internet Video Codec Group, or NetVC is their acronym, and they're working on non -proprietary, uh, a non-proprietary codec for streaming video that is competitive <coughs> with proprietary codecs that are currently in the marketplace. So, up next, um, we've had over the past six months, you know, there have been some growing things, um, you know, in trying to move forward with work. I think because the majority of people uh, involved, myself included, were new to the IETF, and the IETF uh, is a very rigid protocol, and, uh, you know, there are people who have been there for decades, and they have a lot of expertise about, you know, in regards to how things need to be done, and when you don't do something in just the right order, they uh, are you know, quick to jump into correcting. So, uh, you know, we're learning as we go along. Um, the next step in terms of creating new milestones would be uh, refining the goals and articulating a process to the membership uh, via the mailing list, so people have a better idea of what's needed and what's expected um, in terms of contribution to the specifications. Um, I think we would, uh, I'm happy to be corrected, but I, I would say um, there is a special need um, 
for people to help uh, with the writing and reviewing of drafts for the specifications. So again, if you're interested in doing that, you can sign up for the seller mailing list, or just uh, you know talk to me or uh, Dave Rice or Ashley or Drew, um, you know about how you can contribute. And I'll be publishing um, across seller list, uh, the Matroska list, and the FFE one list. Um, I'll be publishing guidelines on how to go about contributing because I think that was an obstacle uh, for a lot of people is that they really wanted to get involved and we weren't quite sure how to do it and um, didn't really want to spend you know, weeks of their time pouring through the IETF documentation to figure out you know, how to get involved. <clears throat> um, as I mentioned, uh, we'll be revising the milestones to be more realistic and allow for sufficient time uh, to create specifications. The IETF is not in a rush. And I think um, we should take the time to make sure contributors are not feeling rushed and you know that everything is carefully vetted, et cetera. Um, and we're confident in when you know publishing drafts that um, you know it's, uh, it's it's in a form where we'll receive uh, you know, feedback and comments, um, but we don't have to rewrite it entirely. Um, so just to clarify um, as well, there are two tracks that we're really looking at. We're looking at uh, publication of specifications for the previous versions, um, and then a work on specifications for the new or existing versions. Um, so, in short, uh, we would really like people, and especially people from this group, um, to review and contribute uh, to the seller working group. Um, please feel free to ask anything publicly <coughs> on the seller mailing list. Um, don't be shy. Don't worry about you know what sort of responses you get. Um, you know, just to jump in. Um, there are no requirements for membership in Seller or the IETF. All you need to do is sign up uh, for the mailing list and um, and start responding and start reading. Um, and anything you want to discuss in regards to the specifications, um, the IETF is the place to do it. Someone will respond. Somebody has a, an opinion or a thought about your question and they'll be more than happy to discuss it with you at length. Um, <clears throat> yeah, uh, so FLAC, um, the also FLAC part of our working group, um, as I said, that was mandated in order for the proposed working group um, you know, to be approved. And we have not to date done any work on FLAC, um, but if you're interested, uh, we'll probably be starting work on FLAC uh, in the upcoming. So, um, if there are any questions about the IETF side of things, I am happy to answer them. Um, yes? It's another question I want just to add that uh, also the specifications on GitHub, uh, for people who know, for people who don't know, it's just a website uh, that's most people code that you can just sign up and create issues if you find something wrong. You can even edit uh, the specifications and send it for review. subscribing to, to a mailing list, receiving lots of stuff you don't understand, and just go on the GitHub specifications, read, if you find something, you just do like two clicks and you can write stuff, and you discuss that. Uh, I guess that's a good point, and not to discourage people from dis um, from subscribing to the IETF services, but you should be doing both. <laughs> you should be able to subscribe to the GitHub uh, repositories and the IETF questions uh, about the IETF or you know, the, how they get involved with Stellar or what they're trying to do. Um, if I hadn't, hadn't, I know I talk very quickly sometimes. So. Is there a relation between IETF and this other some organization, organizations like ESO or SMT or whatever? Or this? Um, not SMT, but ESO? Did you, I, I'm sorry. ESO, yeah. So yes, there is a relationship between ESO and the ITF, but not uh, between SIMT and the ITF. Which is? Um, ESO standards are incorporated in um, the, I, uh, the IETF documentation and protocol for creating, for writing specifications. Okay. Oh. Yes, Peter? Um, is there like any chance that in the, during the process of standardization of any of these three formats, that somebody from IPF site could go and say, well, no, um, nice if that I would work with, uh, will never happen. Or is it going to be certainly standardizable? 
When you say it will never happen, what do you mean? Uh, like, is, is there a chance that all this work is done and then there is no standardization coming out? Uh, no, I don't believe so, because uh, one of the core principles of, IETF, of the ITF is technical competency. So if the specification is technically competent, I'm looking to everybody here, um, you know, and uh, you know, it uh, fulfills the milestones uh, created by the working group, um, then it should be published as a specification. Um, especially because this is not something that we're starting from scratch, so it's not something that people have never heard of, you know, and are questioning the use and validity of. Um, we know people use it, we know um, it's technically competent. Um, it's just a matter, I think, of getting the group uh, to participate in uh, formatting the specifications for uh, the IETF review and then incorporating the feedback from the group. So, I mean, that kind of flips it around and puts the burden on the people participating with that, well, if you're competent, then of course there's no obstacle. <laughs> There is, I, yeah, in short, there is not a, a chance that you know the IETF will just say, you know, we no longer like this. Yeah. Uh, if I remember correctly, there already is a flag documentation on the flag homepage. There is already a flag. Uh, about the flag uh, file format, if I remember correctly. I haven't been on uh, that site for two years or so, mm -hmm. but uh, uh, I think that there is a um, technical uh, document about the flag uh, file format. Right, and I think flag is the least controversial, um, you know, there's a limited amount of controversy surrounding these, um, you know, uh, overall, but um, flag is the least controversial and it's just a matter for flag of um, getting that technical document um, formatted uh, as an ITF specification and publishing it so it lives somewhere else other than the uh, flag website and is published, you know, as an ITF specification so it has you know, kind of the, um, so it, it has the benefit of, you know, being reviewed by the IETF and, and everything like that. So, yes, yeah, I mean, the specification does exist. Is it the same for Matroska and FSU one? There, there are already specifications on the corresponding website, but we are missing a peer review and for, uh, formal review from someone else. If we go for IETF, it is from a, a, a being reviewed, reviewed by our peers. And for FLAC, it is the same issue. The, the state is on the FLAC website, that there was no peer review, and we want to have some peer review of better compatibility, for example. Yes, Um, I think it would depend on you know, the update required, uh, or I'm sorry, the substance of the update, whether it was major enough to, uh, you know, whether it substantively changed the specification, in which case, yes, I think you would need a, you know, an active review period to open up, and it might um, you know, be through the seller working group or um, you know, as part of work for another working group. Um, but yeah, effectively, um, once the working group, as Dave said, meets its milestones, um, then it's no longer active, um, and all the documentation and everything uh, remains on the IETF uh, seller uh, website, but the mailing list is not active, and not actively seeking review of the specifications. Um, but yeah, I mean, they're not intended to be static documents if, if change is necessary. Um, if it's something like you know, spelling errors or grammatical errors, you know, that's doesn't really constitute a substantive change, but um, the community does need to be aware of a change being made. Um, so there would most likely, I think, be um, some sort of announcement about you know, the change required, and then pub as uh, publication to the general list, and then um, I think you'd have to make an argument for reopening the working group. So there's, there are informational drafts 
Um, there are RFCs, requests for comments, and then there are the STD standards. Um, so the informational draft is for something like a previous version um, of FFE1 where, where changes have been made since that version and you know, you're working maybe you know, two versions ahead or something like that. So you don't want to go back and revise you know, what is in effect like a historical document or a version that someone else, you know, someone might be using and um, you know, you want, to, uh, you want to dedicate the majority of the work on the current uh, specification. But there's still need, um, you know, for things that need to be backward compatible for the documentation for the previous versions to be available. So that's like the informational draft. And um, of course the publication requirements are going to be less stringent for that. Because um, you're not, again, um, you're not creating something new and asking people to review it. You're saying, this is how it was. You know, we're just documenting how it was and we to publish that. So requests for comments are um, something that's going to be headed uh, towards becoming a standard. And that's sort of the drafts that are for the community review. It's the, you know, the name requests for comments. Um, and the standard is something that's completed, you know, the entire process has gone through you know, the request for comments, has gone through peer review, has been finalized and become the state an IETF standard. It is, I, yeah, the IETF um, documentation can be very confusing in regards to the process. And they have, uh, yeah, there's certainly, you know, kind of a, you know, a place for everything and everything in its place sort of mentality. But doesn't the working group, can the working group stop at RC or do they have to reach SDG states to actually consider it done? The specification has to reach uh, the SDG state. Um, and that requires, um, like a document, document shepherd will guide the, uh, like the specification in theory uh, through the process from you know, draft to standard. Um, there's an RFC editor who um, works for the IETF and is not affiliated with any of the working groups and you know, doesn't advocate for a particular thing, but helps um, you know, get these ready. And then, um, yeah, ultimately it has to be approved by uh, the IETF and it's open to the entire community and once that consensus is, is achieved, um, um, then it's published as the standard specification. But um, the changes that need to be made to the specification will be made by the people contributing in the work group, so as it goes to that process. Um, right, the working group uh, members will be involved in implementing the changes because obviously they're the people you know, with the most expertise. So it never like passes out entirely in the hands in terms of the content. Anybody else? Okay, cool. thank you very much.